when we were looking at the program for today, there was something at the end, uh, which was a 10 minutes of a closing message. And I read that as a closing massage. And I thought, <laughs> whoa, uh, what do we let ourselves in for here? So my <laughs> subject Later. today is, uh, is three things. It, it's, it's children. So um, does anyone here have children? hands down, and was anybody, more difficult question this, a bit more probing, was anybody once a child, hands up, <laughs> hands up anybody who once was a child, uh, slightly more of you, uh, I have a word with those afterwards who didn't quite put their hands up then, <laughs> once a school teacher, uh, always, and so I want to talk about children, and I want to talk about love. And I want to talk about wonder or curiosity. And in our schools, for many children, particularly those who come from less advantaged backgrounds, it is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to open up the heart and the mind. Education meaning to lead out, to draw out, to have the heart open, to have the mind open to the unbelievable wonder and beauty of the universe and to understand it, the literature, the art, the science, the mathematics. Schools should be incredibly joyful places. They should be places where children can't wait to get in in the morning and the teachers are just so excited. Teaching should be the most popular profession in the world. I mean, so many people, not all, but so many people want to be parents. But if you're a teacher, you're with children all your professional life. And it is, it is wonderful, but it's not nearly wonderful enough in nearly enough places. And it's sad. It's sad, because if we don't get this right, then people will, for the rest of their lives, because you all know how important those early formative experiences are in forming who you are and the way that you think and feel about life. Just think about what schools could be. Just think about your own schools. And this is, I'm just going to do something with you now that we do at... Uh, the schools that I've been in, and I haven't yet put it, broached it to the university, but wait. This is what we love to punctuate the day with at a school called Wellington. And it's incredibly radical um, and weird, um, and you're going to do it now. And this is what uh, I think is the most valuable thing that children anywhere in the world and at actually any level, including universities, even in Harvard and Princeton and, and the University of Bhutan, if that, uh, if that exists, which I'm sure it does. This is the one thing that's the most important that you can learn at school or university. And we're going to do it now. And we're going to close our eyes, and I know Matthew is going to do this, but this is just a very quick taster of it. We're going to close our eyes. And we're going to inhale and exhale deeply. And we're going to feel and know that we're doing it. Just keep the eyes closed. And just feel love for yourself. And feel that love expand and acceptance of yourself. Accepting those things that you find very hard to accept about yourself. Just that sense of acceptance and let it ripple out. And just, you, know, you can open the eyes now, just, just imagine if in our schools or in your workplaces or at home before you have meals, we could just punctuate our days with stillness. Many teachers seriously imagine that the kids come in off the playground and they are just can't wait to get into a math class or into, uh, into biology. Their minds are not in that class. Their minds are everywhere. They're scattered. We've heard 
twice now about the importance of attention. Just learning to be with yourself is the most important thing. And what happens, what goes wrong with schools, is there's no time for silence. There's no time for love, no time for curiosity. It isn't a, a leading out, a drawing out of these wonderful innate intelligences. But if they're not drawn out when you're young, may never, may never be drawn out for the rest of your life. I mean, how many of you, for example, have learned how to uh, play uh, the cello, um, you know, if you didn't at school? Some of you, but very few if you are typical. How many of you um, have taken up oil painting? Some of you, but not many. The, 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 the sense of having these, these faculties developed, and the reason we don't is because we have a factory system of education the world over, and it's a factory system that was designed in the 19th century, may have been relevant a bit in the 20th century, but it's entirely redundant in the 21st century. Entirely redundant. It's a grad grind system, as Dickens wrote about in Hard Times. This, uh, uh, the article where I'm talking today about the Harvard study that shows how hopeless hopeless our schools are in terms of understanding the jobs that employers need. They don't need people with hard-edged technical skills, people without their hearts and curiosities and, uh, and feelings and artistic side uh, and human skills developed. You know, that's what they need. That's what they need. They don't need so much of the mathematical, hard-edged, exam-driven education. The jobs that have been created now are the ones that computers can't replicate. They're the ones that excel in our human qualities. We need much more of that in our schools and universities. Yesterday, driving around to Richard Layard's for lunch on the M25, I was dictating this article, and I have a slightly... Uh, I was dictating it to, to somebody who was quite young, and, and I talked about our grad-grind system of education. Uh, and when it came back, and I just looked at it before signing it off, it came back as our, as our grade grind system of education. I thought, whoa, that's great. Um, so, so in went grade grind system of education. So there we are. There we are. What can we do about it? Just to conclude, we have to recognize, all of us, that education is fundamental, that we have to try with our own children and the schools and the universities we're involved in to look at the inner quality of those schools, to recognize that they are educating not just the minds in a very narrow part, the logical and linguistic part of the mind, that also should be about developing the whole human being, recognizing that if that isn't, that won't be maybe later in life. And we all have to recognize in ourselves that education isn't just something that happens between 5 and 16 or 5 and 18 or and 21. It's something that all of us are engaged in all our lives. As His Holiness repeatedly said, education, we are all on that journey of education. And you know, there's only one place and time to begin, and that is now. Thank you.